Hello and welcome back to my channel and to one of my most requested videos actually which is a roast dinner cook along. So I actually find roast dinners quite stressful to cook and I think the timings and trying to get everything out hot and you know tasting good is something that I really struggle with but I have sort of perfected my own way of doing things over the years so I thought I'd take you along with me and show you how I do things. We don't typically have a roast every Sunday but when we do we do really enjoy it. So today we actually have a leg of lamb which was donated by my mother-in-law. She didn't have any room in her freezer so I kindly took that off of her and was happy to use it. I'm also using up all the carrots from my fridge because I had so many in the bottom that needed to be either used or thrown away. So I don't like waste so I decided to use them and any leftovers I actually make a roast in a soup with so there isn't anything that goes to waste. So potatoes wise, I always try and buy Maris Piper potatoes if I can. I just think they're really good for roasting and they go nice and crispy. My husband always requests parsnips. That's one of his favorites. And my favorite is cauliflower and broccoli cheese. So I decided to make one of those and I make my own cheese sauce and top it with Parmesan. That way it goes really nice and crispy. We're also gonna be having some red cabbage, which I tend to just boil and then put some butter with and it's really, really nice. And although I will be using the lamb juice to make gravy I always add some chicken or lamb gravy granules and some mint sauce to try and give it my own spin so I'm gonna take through step by step how I do it so I like to get a lot of my prep done in the morning or before I want to actually cook the roast so I don't get too overwhelmed with trying to do 50 things at once. First thing I always do is peel my potatoes and all my other veg and I tend to chop them up and put them in water that stops them going brown or drying out and you can leave them all day like this or even overnight if you want to be really organised and prep the night before. So when I chop my potatoes I try not to make them too small because I find that they can kind of disintegrate or go a little bit mushy if you make them tiny. So just usually a medium sized potato I would cut it in half, any small ones I just put straight in and then I always parboil my potatoes for about 10 minutes before I put them in the oven. So next I'm going to prep my carrots and my parsnips, both of these I just peel and chop and like I said I'm just going to put them in some bowls or saucepans of water until I'm ready to cook them a bit later on. I don't parboil my carrots or parsnips because I find they go soft enough anyway and I do also cut these quite chunky. I used to cut them into like thin strips and I found that they were kind of caramelizing so much that you ended up with lots of little strips of like sticky veg and you couldn't really tell what was what so I always leave things a little bit more chunky these days also I just want to say if you have noticed there are specks up my arms it's not dirt I promise you we're actually decorating our bedroom um, so that's why there's probably green paint up and down my arms I'm a messy painter and I was doing the roast dinner in between decorating which is also why you'll probably notice about three or four outfit changes because like I said I'm not a very clean painter and I tend to end up painting myself half the time <laughs> So with my cabbage, I just like to slice it up and then remove the stalky part, pop it in some water ready to boil a bit later on. It doesn't take very long to cook at all. I always put a generous amount of salt in the water and then once I've drained it, I add a good amount of butter to it and it just makes it taste so good and all the boys absolutely love it as well. It almost takes on a little bit of a sweet flavour. So this is one of our favourites to use with a roast dinner. So once I have done the red cabbage, it is time for me to start preparing the lamb. Now, what I usually do is get some fresh rosemary. I have a rosemary bush in my garden, but if you don't, you can just buy some rosemary. And I tend to make little cuts all over the lamb and poke the rosemary into these little cuts. Once I've done that, I will drizzle it with some oil and season it really, really generously with salt and pepper, especially pepper. I put lots and lots of black pepper on the top. I've actually got a new oven. My oven of 10 years or just over 10 years actually like completely died the other day um, and we had to get a new one. So it was probably the worst time for me to be cooking a roast dinner and doing a video on it because I have no idea how to use my new oven. It's actually quite frustrating but I'm not going to go into that now. <laughs> but 
It's got so many settings on that I don't really think it needs at all. So I ignored the instructions on the packaging and I preheated my oven to 150 degrees Celsius, which is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And I put my lamb in for two hours and 10 minutes. I checked it with a meat thermometer afterwards and it was around 76, 77 degrees. Apparently rare is 48 degrees and medium to well is around 67 to 74 degrees. So that's for a consistent result all the way through, which was what I wanted. So I was quite happy with that. I then cover my lamb in foil and a clean tea towel and I let it sit to one side that way all the juices are going to flow out of it and you get to use those for your gravy which is absolutely amazing. So next up I'm going to prepare my batter for my Yorkshire puddings. Now this is a BBC good food recipe which I will leave linked down below. Really really simple you basically use 200ml of eggs or 4 eggs, 200ml of milk and 200ml of flour so it's equal parts flour, eggs and milk and that's plain flour. I always season it really, really well with salt as well because I think that Yorkshire's taste so much better when they're seasoned. And I just whisk it all together and then let this rest in the fridge for the rest of the day until you're ready to cook. And the Yorkshire's come out absolutely massive as you will see towards the end of the video. So after I've rested my lamb for a while, I will then pour the lamb juices into a jug and let them cool, pop them in the fridge and that way you can remove the fat from the top easily and you can use the juices. So to make my cheese sauce, and again, I will leave the recipe link down below. I use 500 ml of milk, 50 grams of butter, four tablespoons of plain flour, and around 100 grams of grated cheddar. I also add a teaspoon of English mustard and I season it really well with salt and pepper. So what I do is just whisk together my ingredients apart from my cheese and I put it on the hob and just bring it to the boil gently, whisking as I go. Once it starts to thicken, you can add in your 100 grams of grated cheese and let it melt a little bit. It doesn't matter if it doesn't melt all the way because it is going in the oven. So to cook my broccoli and cauliflower, I actually used frozen broccoli and cauliflower because it's always handy to have in and then it doesn't go off and get wasted. So I just bring the water to the boil and give it about five minutes so it's still al dente. I don't want it completely soft because like I said, it's going back into the oven. So I take it out once it's a little bit crunchy still pop it into an oven proof dish and then we pour the cheese sauce over the top and you can set this to one side until later on when I will add my parmesan cheese there's also a little bit in a bowl because one of my sons cannot stomach cheese sauce so I always do him a little bit plain because it's just easy to take it out for him and I really don't mind like I said it's not a fussy thing he just can't do it bless him so it's at this stage I will parboil my potatoes so bring them to the boil and give them about 10 minutes and whilst that's happening I will heat up the oil for my trays which I'm going to cook my potatoes on and also my carrots and parsnips so I'll probably give this about 10 minutes in the oven at around 220 degrees just to get the oil nice and hot a really good tip that I love is that if you have a wooden spoon and you put it into the oil you can tell if it's hot or not by the bubbling can you see it bubbling there that means your oil is hot enough to put your potatoes in without testing it in a stupid way which is something I might do so once my oil is hot enough I put my parsnips and carrots straight onto the tray I don't parboil them at all and I season these really well with salt and pepper these go into the oven at the same time as the potatoes but once the potatoes have been boiled and drained I will shake them around and basically bash them up a lot until they look a bit like this. This will guarantee you a really crispy coating and once you tip these into your hot oil it helps to seal the outside really really well so don't skip on the bashing your potatoes <laughs> It's a very important step. Once I've tipped my potatoes into the oil, I then season them with salt and pepper as always. And then I like to put a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder and some herbs. So today I added some sage and then I toss them in the oil and I also add some butter. It just helps to give them a really nice crunch. Make sure they're all coated in all your seasonings and your oil and your butter. And then these are going to go back into the oven and I would give them about 50 minutes in total. Obviously every oven is different and I still don't really know how to use mine. So around 50 minutes in total, that's the same for the carrots and the parsnips. But after about 20 minutes, I will take them out, give them all a good shake and turn around. And then that's when I will add in my broccoli and cauliflower cheese and my Yorkshire puddings. So now it is time to oil up your muffin tray or whatever it is you're going to cook your Yorkshire puddings in. So I pop a little bit of oil in each one and this goes back into the top of my oven. 
Whilst that's cooking and heating up, I will put parmesan over the top of my cauliflower and broccoli cheese. So whilst my oil is heating up for my Yorkshire puddings and before I actually put them back into the oven, I take out my potatoes, my parsnips and my carrots, just give them all a little bit of a turn around and shake them about a little bit. Pop those back in the oven and that way you haven't got to open your oven again whilst your Yorkshire puddings are cooking because that is probably one of the biggest mistakes. As soon as you open that oven, they are going to go really flat. So shake everything around, do everything you need to do before you put your Yorkshires in and that can be the very last thing that you need to open your oven for. So after I've tossed around my potatoes, my carrots and my parsnips, I will then spoon my mixture from the fridge into my little Yorkshire pudding tins or my muffin tin, put this in the oil while it's still really, really hot and then get it back in the oven. I've also put my cauliflower and broccoli cheese in the oven now too. So we're just gonna watch it through the door. We're not gonna open it. We're gonna just cross our fingers and pray that they rise. So whilst all that is back in the oven and being completely left alone, we can take our lamb juices from the fridge and you can see the big layer of fat on the top of that. This is the kind of thing that you could save to make like really nice roast potatoes with or I don't really know what else you use lamb fat for but I actually did just get rid of mine because I was at that stage in a roast dinner where I just needed to use the juices and I didn't really know what else to do with the fat but I'm sure some people will be cursing me right now that I have actually wasted all this lovely fat off the top. But anyway, I still kept the really good flavorful juices and I added that to a saucepan to make my gravy. So at this stage I've also started to boil my cabbage and now it's time to carve my lamb. It came out absolutely perfectly, oh, it was melt in the mouth tender and it was just such a nice cut of meat. I actually used every bit of leftover meat to make a curry the next day as well, a slow cooker chickpea and lamb curry. But you can see as I'm cutting it like the tenderness and the juices that are just running out of it and this has sat for quite a while so it's rested really really well. I was really really pleased with it. So. I carved this up and then I got to making my gravy. So for my gravy, I could have just used flour and butter and things to add to my lamb juices, but I wanted to cheat, make things a little bit easier. So I used my lamb juices and then I used a chicken gravy to kind of thicken the gravy. It has sage and onion in the gravy as well. And I also added a big squeeze of mint sauce. I always do this when I make gravy for lamb and it just goes really, really well. My Yorkshire puddings came out of the oven then and Steve went, oh look, they're really huge. And look, they're sinking, they're getting flatter. So I was screaming at him, well, film them then. So they actually did start out even bigger than this, but my husband just stood there staring at them as they deflated. And I was like, seriously? So anyway, now is time to plate up our roast dinner and this is probably one of the most stressful parts. The one tip I would give you and it's something my dad always used to do is just make sure your plates are hot first. As long as you put your food straight onto a hot plate then you are halfway there and my dad could not stand cold food. So it's one thing I've always carried over. I always heat up my plates <laughs> before serving up. I tend to always leave the gravy off of everybody's plate until they come and get ready to actually eat their dinner because there's nothing worse than somebody smothering your roast dinner in gravy if it's not what you wanted. I'm not the biggest gravy fan. I tend to like my crispy roast potatoes to say crispy. Um, so I kind of like to control where I put it. So that's why I do my plates like this. And then afterwards I will say who wants gravy and everyone can say yes or no, obviously. This was one of my best roast dinners I've cooked, even if I do say so myself. I think the trick is to keep it a little bit simple. Try not to overdo it with the vegetables and things. Sometimes it's really tempting to pile your plate as high as you can with every veg you can think of. But sometimes that is a recipe for disaster. So I really hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, and you like this kind of content then please leave me a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know so that I can make more if you're not already subscribed I would love to have you here and I will be back really really soon with another video take care guys did you make it did you break free did you manage to be who you want to be maybe somewhere you think about me too